Hey folks, it's Chris, welcome back. So today's episode will be about the term stacking. You will hear this term a lot in astrophotography, both planetary and deep space imaging. And I thought you should know at least something about this term. So we're gonna dive into the fundamental theory of stacking, do a little bit of math to understand what all this is about. Ready? <laughs> Let's go. So if we break it down to the most basic level, taking images of objects in the night sky means we gather information about that certain object. And we do that by catching photons, <laughs> hence the name, of that certain object using our camera sensor. The longer the exposures, the more information we gather about this object. In astrophotography we normally talk about hours of exposure time. But unfortunately no tracking mount can support hours of error-free tracking. And in addition to that, if you expose hours of data onto your camera sensor, everything will be just white. That's the case because each pixel can only hold a certain amount of data before calling this white. With 8-bit images that's 256 data points in each of the RGB channels and then that's white. And adding 10 additional data points won't change anything because there's no whiter than white. So whatever. And because of this problem, instead of taking one hour long exposure, we take only, say, exposures of a few minutes. Those single so-called light frames suffer from two main problems. A. They obviously can't contain as much data as the long exposures would have. <laughs> no kidding. And B. The image will be quite noisy, so, and both problems are naturally heavily related. So what's the deal? Why is a short exposure noisy and a long exposure is not? When taking images of objects within the night sky, we struggle for every bit of information. There's a great book by Steve Richards, Making Every Photon Count. And that's exactly it. So while waiting for incoming photons, we are effectively rolling the dice. We can predict how many photons from a certain object will hit the sensor during a given period of time within a given interval of certainty. We call those incoming photons from the target signal. And we can predict that there will be hopefully far less photons coming from the glow of the surrounding city sky. But we can't predict where the next photon will hit, that's totally random. So we are rolling the dice and therefore submitted ourselves to the law of large numbers. And here we need to do some basic statistics, I'm sorry guys. This is a python program I wrote that throws the dice for us. Imagine each of the numbers representing a pixel on the camera sensor. Now if you start the game and wait, say, what is that, 20 rounds? After those rounds there is no certain pattern. The distribution seems to be random. Is pixel 5 a signal stronger than the others? Or are 4 and 6 extra dark background pixels? This uneven distribution of the short exposures is what we later call noise. But if you continue the game and wait for, now we have a few thousand throws, then the more throws you get, the more, say, the true character of the distribution will unveil itself. And so this is the representation of a long exposure. And this pattern is nearly evenly spread over all the background pixels, but indicates a significant signal within the pixel 1. And for sure, there's our target. In this final distribution, the solitary pixels are no longer all over the place, but follow more or less sort of the true nature of what they represent and thereby we get a smooth image from the long exposure comparing to the noisy image from the short first exposure. And so that's the law of large numbers and we have to obey this law in astroimaging all the time. Taking an image of a target in the night sky means unveiling the true distribution of it. And to do that many dice need to be thrown. In other words we need a long exposure time, otherwise the result will be unevenly spread over our pixels and the image is noisy. Phew, so, hey, we wanted to talk about stacking, didn't we? So let's get back to it, let's see some action. Okay, Stace from Astro Stace did a fantastic video about stacking. She used a hand-drawn grid to illustrate a camera sensor. I really liked the video and the idea and stuck to it. Definitely check out her video. I took the idea one step further and wrote a Python script to generate a totally fictional 9x9 pixel camera sensor with simulated photons hitting in totally arbitrary time intervals. The underlying distribution represents something like a donut shape, maybe a planetary nebula, I don't know. It was quite a fun. As mentioned, we can't take hours of exposure time with just one single frame. That's just not possible. 
but we do need the information of those hours. So what we can do is take multiple short exposures and simply add all the data, add all the information together, simple as that. And in the most basic form, this is stacking. By adding all those images together, we simply enlarge the numbers we threw the dice, double it, triple it, etc, etc. And thereby we smooth the distribution of the image. When doing basic stacking, we do one more thing. You see here that we add everything up and then we divide the whole set by the numbers of light frames we take. We do so in order to keep the brightness level constant, otherwise the image would get brighter and brighter with every image that is added to the stack. It's a little trick, but it doesn't change any math behind it. The throwing the dice program did it too. See, the length of the bars in this diagram never exceeded the fixed height. The program factored them down, but the distribution got evenly spread either way. To make the point again, to even out the image, in other words to smooth it, we need to add additional information. So that's the plus that gains us access to the law of large numbers. And a noise free image. The division by n only keeps the brightness level constant, nothing else. Now let's see some stacking in simulated action. Here we have two single images from the simulated sensor. The numbers here are totally arbitrary. Let's just pretend that the sum of the incoming photons gave this little pixel here a value of 1.31. The same pixel on the second light frame has a value of 1.1. So 1.31 plus 1.1 equals 2.41. And to average means we divide 2.41 by 2. And that equals 1.205. So the value of the pixel after stacking the first two images is 1.205, somewhere between the first and the second sub. But the magic is not done with two images. Though this first stacked image does look a lot cleaner than the first two subs, that's for sure. Look at this. This is the process going fast through a series of 100 light frames. You see that the stacking process produces a very smooth image in the end. Equally smooth as the single, but a hundred times longer exposure. And this method of adding the data to smooth the image is still valid, even if the image is so noisy that you can't recognize the signal distribution in one single frame. I mean, look at those very short light frames. They appear to be a messy mess. Everything's just all over the place. But beneath all that random noise, there is a slightly higher probability for a photon to hit the pixels representing the imaged object. So all we have to do is add more data, more information, so that over time we get a grip on the underlying distribution. And for sure, there it is. It's still a bit noisy due to the short exposure time, I would have needed 10 times more data to look as smooth as the final image from the last stacking process. Or look at that. This is a chart with the taken ultra short, thus noisy exposures, and this is a chart listing the stacking process. You can see the noise decrease and the signal building up over time. That brings us to the next and for practical usage most important subtopic of stacking, the SNR. The SNR is the so-called signal to noise ratio. You therefore divide a signal value by the corresponding noise value and get a number. The ratio indicates, the higher the SNR, the bigger is the signal value compared to the noise value. And in astrophotography this always means to bring down the noise. And we are especially concerned about the noise of the dark background, because the bright objects we want to capture are not that noisy. But why is that so? It does trace back itself to the law of large numbers in our initial game of dice. Remember? The more often you throw the dice, the smoother the distribution of the results will be. The first 10 rounds will look like a messy mess, but the longer you throw the dice, the smoother the distribution will be. So that's the reason with brighter objects as well. More photons from the objects means we played the game of dice more often in this area. And so naturally the distribution will be much smoother compared to the dark background area with only a few thrown dice, aka lonely photons arrived yet. Imaging deep sky objects thereby always means to get enough information to reduce the background noise as much as possible. Thereby you raise the SNR and you will be able to stretch the data in your final processing steps much harder, but more on that later. But don't get me wrong, higher SNR also means a smoother signal in the brighter target regions as well, it's not all about the background. Look at that image. Both images show the same region of the Great Orion Nebula. The left image is worth 1 hour of exposure time, whereas the right image is worth 3 hours. Both images are no cracker, but you can see the difference between them. Left is noisy, the right image is much smoother. 
same camera, same processing, just different exposure times. And having this extra information will allow you to bring out faint details of the nebula without having to deal with noise too much. So all in all, bringing the SNR up by adding more data mainly means dumping the background noise. But it also softens the color gradient within your target. So now, how many images should you capture in order to stack them together to get a nice and flat image? When should you stop taking images at night? This question is a very urgent one for astro beginners as well as for so-called pros. 20 images or 30 images? But unfortunately there's no general answer because the question kinda goes in the wrong direction. First step would be not to ask for the best number of frames but for the total integrated exposure time, so the added exposure lengths for all our light frames. I mean, obviously, say, 20 10 second frames won't do the same job as 20 10 minute frames, I think that's clear. So this integrated exposure time should be in the area of hours for each project. The image quality improvement thereby will be gradually. One hour and you can see the object, another and you will see fainter details, another and the overall noisiness will get low, another and the background starts to equalize. This is again down to the law of large numbers. The aperture and the sensitivity of your camera sensor defines how many photons we capture and process. And the more information we collect in a given area, the smoother the area will look like. So the question is not how many light frames, but what's the integrated exposure time for which telescope and which camera for which deep sky object? Everything depends. Now the second big question is, how long shall the individual light frames be? And so there are two answers right here, and quite opposite ones. Technically, I mean from a purely mathematical standpoint, there should be no difference between a few long and many short subs, as long as the total integrated exposure time is the same. So for regular background noise and image smoothness only, without any other influences, 10 1 minute subs should be, and I say should, be the same as one 10 minute light frame. The amount of photons hitting the sensor will be the same, the amount of information to smooth the distribution of our image will be the same, so the noise level of that distribution should be the same. One individual sub of course will look a lot more noisy, but on the other hand, for the same total integrated exposure time you would simply take much more subs, and I mean much more subs. With our example you'd need to take 10 times the number of light frames. 10 times more memory usage, downloading time, stacking time, etc. etc. Avoiding this is the first but a minor reason against short 10 second subs. But purely mathematically speaking, no matter how noisy the image seems, as long as there is, on average, one photon more showing up inside your target area than in the surrounding background, this signal will sooner or later show up, given enough subs to stack, why shouldn't it? Look at that light frames, they are nearly entirely made out of noise. But on average, every 20 image or so, some pixels contain slightly more signal than the average noise level. And so it's just a matter of adding information and information and information up and up and up and up and finally, you see, in the end, the slightly more present information will show up. But sad thing told, in real life this doesn't work, it just doesn't. It does tell us though that we can stack images out of short exposures. And if you fail to produce longer subs out of technical reasons like me here, I failed to polar align and my old mount was eh, kinda over challenged, so I could only produce 20 second subs. I ended taking hundreds of them, each with nearly no signal. And in the end I at least got some faint structure inside the Crab Nebula M1. Not bad for the ancient DSLR I was working with. But in the end, where there is no signal, there will be no signal. And the final stacked image highly depends on your input subs, that's for sure. And the main reason? There are other influences, despite the random background noise. Our camera has several different other noise sources, mostly technical based. One of them is read noise, a noise, or rather a distortion of the information distribution, a slight uncertainty, created by accessing the individual pixels during readout. Those errors will raise with the number of subs taken, even though we can fight against those more later. And if those noise patterns overlay your signal, well, that's bad. Another factor, though I'm not quite sure about this, might be some kind of threshold within our sensor. Say a sensor delivers the first bit of information only if more than X photons hit. 
then in every sub 2 short to significantly gather more than this x photons, your signal would effectively be deleted out of these subs. Or am I doing a mistake here? Leave your comments below. But all in all, thumb rule for astro imaging, take as long subs as you can. Then you only need to take a few of them to get to the desired integrated exposure time. Less downloading, less stacking, etc. etc. Some targets though have bright cores, so you might get a bunch of shorter exposures too, just to not let the core burn out. More on that later when we dive into the programs you can use to stack. Just keep the histogram one third on the left side, that way you play safe. As a first guessing, lots of folks tend to use two or three minute exposures. Some go deep with 10-15 minutes, but others produce sweet images with shorter ones. Go and play. Yeah, so that was stacking and stuff. So takeaways? Our images need data to show the physical objects in the night sky. Stacking simply means adding more data to the pool, averaging the values not to overexpose everything. The ratio between signal and noise depends on the law of large numbers. Throw the dice often enough and the distribution will be even smoother. More data, less noise, softer details on faint nebula structures. Think in exposure time and not in subs taken. Keep the aperture or fastness of your scope and the sensitivity of the sensor in mind. Normally the all in all stacked and integrated exposure time for a project is measured in multiple hours. So don't do target hopping during one night, take your time. Subs may be as long as possible. But either way, it is possible to produce stunning things using hundreds of short subs. Normal sub lengths are measured in minutes. And that's it. <laughs> Boy, was it a ride. You stayed with me? Be proud of you. But therefore I hope you really learned something about the underlying principles of stacking and data collection during an astro imaging session. And while your telescope tracks reliably the sky, while your camera takes light frame after light frame, sit back, take a pair of binoculars and just gaze. It's so refreshing. And that's it. Thanks for watching. As always, hit like and subscribe if you liked it. Or do you know any newcomers to this hobby? Lead them here, maybe they can find some useful information here. And as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.